Well, I think that, you know, in terms of my own research focus, uh, I am very focused on that intersection between nuclear medicine and medical oncology. So systemic drugs that we can give that can deliver nuclear medicine to either tumor or bone. Uh, there are now a host of clinical trials, both in early phase and in uh, registration phases, phase of, the, of, of drug development, looking at tumor-directed radioligand therapy. Uh, so I think that those are quite exciting. Um, those compounds have shown to, been shown to be very active in uh, informal uh, assessments, primarily in Europe. Now those trials are going into phase three and uh, uh, for registration to demonstrate actual formal clinical benefit in, in, in men with CRPC. And so um, I think that that's a, a, you know, a very innovative way of treating the disease. In the past, we foc focused on delivering radiation to bone. Now we can focus on delivering radiation to the tumor. Um, so the, the most uh, advanced of those compounds is radio-labeled with lutetium-177 but uh, there's also an alpha emitter uh, radio labeled with actinium-225, which is in earlier phases, uh, which is quite exciting as well. Um, in the non-radio ligand domain, there are a host of studies looking at specifically patients with DNA repair defects using PARP inhibitors that I think is, has the potential, potential to really be transformative in prostate cancer so that we can really leverage the knowledge that we have, not just of where the patient is in the clinical course of the disease, like castration-resistant disease or castration-sensitive disease or metastatic disease or non-metastatic disease, but really biologically what's driving their tumor and then specifically targeting those, that, sec that segment of the patient population. Um, and then, of course, there's a whole world of immunotherapy that we don't, haven't really appreciated in terms of um, obvious levels of activity until more recently and identifying those patients for whom immunotherapy might actually uh, be a viable treatment um, in light of the fact that it's not self-evident who those patients are right now and there may be a toxicity issue that uh, makes patient selection all that much more difficult. So I think that th those are pretty exciting studies as well.